but when you say they need to focus on, I mean, some of the things you said the other side's doing, including Liberal Party leader Peter Dutton. So are you disappointed with how he's conducted himself in this campaign? I've not criticised Peter Dutton at all in relation to this. I've taken a aim at some of the arguments being run by the No campaign more broadly. Um, I think that it's mm. really important that Australians actually understand what we're, what we're voting on here. Um, I take the view that I want Australians to be informed. I've said to Australians, if you don't know, get informed. Read the arguments. Participate in the debate. That's the system the right. frame has set up. Because I think but, when, but people he, do, when people mm. do focus on those issues, Tom... They'll see that this is a small change, that it's a change that completes the Constitution. It's a change that is designed to help the, uh, the government, the Parliament, close the gap. Because we can't have a situation in Australia where, in a nation this wealthy and this successful, we have an Indigenous life expectancy eight years lower than the rest of the population, a suicide rate two and a half times the rest of the population, where we have one in two Indigenous Australians living at or below the poverty line. That's a situation that we cannot allow to continue. And this referendum is our chance as Australians to put in place a new system to help us fix that. When you singled out various elements, I mean, you spoke, for example, around the parliament having, still having primacy. Well, plenty of people in the No campaign, including the opposition leader, have spoken about their concern and pointed to legal advice that that might not be the case. So have you reached out to him and said it's not the case? Have you expressed disappointment? How are you tackling the well, fact that the leader of your party is seemingly talking about something you strongly disagree with? Well, I think all Australians should look very closely at paragraph three uh, of the amendment, which says it's up to the parliament mm. to determine the powers, functions, compositions and so forth in relation to the voice. The, what the provision so does is it establishes... Well, look, uh, Peter's on the no campaign. I'm on the yes campaign. Um, uh, people on the no campaign are making their arguments. I'm making arguments as to why I think uh, this should be supported. And, uh, and I'm pointing out some of the things on the no campaign with which I disagree. Um, uh, you okay. know, this isn't a campaign Might where there are Might it be difficult to get back into the Liberal fold, though, there, there if are, you like, I'm, once I'm this a is proud all Liberal over. and I support the leadership of Peter Dutton. I think he's doing a, a tremendous job as, as our leader. Uh, and I was uh, recently re-endorsed as the Liberal candidate for Barara. I'm proud to be a Liberal. It's just uh, in one of our traditions, one of our great traditions, is that Liberal backbenchers can campaign on issues as they see fit. And I'm joined in this mm. campaign by people like the opposition leader, the Liberal leader in New South Wales, Mark Speakman, like former Premier Mike Baird, like a, a range of shadow ministers here in my home state, like James Griffin and Matt Keane, uh, like the Liberal leader yeah. in the ACT. There's, there's a lot of Liberals who are in favour of, uh, uh, of this. And um, I... I it doesn't matter what your politics are, this isn't about politics, it's about the change to our constitution. And I just encourage Australians to, to read the provision, because if you read the provision, you'll mm. see that this is a safe and straightforward change. What about the yes side? Uh, reports emerging today that if people, if they're trying to convince people to vote for yes, and the concern is someone has about detail, how will the voice work? They're supposed to sort of redirect them. Has there always been a bit of a, a fear of going into detail for whatever reason? You think any detail will be seized upon by, by the No campaign and for that reason it's being kept very sort of broad brushstrokes? Well, when I'm asked about detail, I point to the things that we know that are publicly available from the government's own policy statements. Uh, we know that this is a body that's going to be chosen by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. We know that there'll be an equal number of men and women. We know that there'll be spots reserved for young people and people from remote communities. We know that there'll be term limits. Uh, we know that this will be an advisory body. It won't be engaged in administering programs uh, or funds. Uh, these are some of the things that the government has been clear on. Uh, and we know from the Minister for Indigenous Australians that the first four matters in the inbox for The Voice will be closing the gap on education, employment, healthcare and housing. And I think they're the right things for, for this body to, to focus on because they are the big challenges that we face as a nation in terms of improving outcomes for Indigenous Australians. This is the best nation on earth. But we have this gap that hasn't closed, doesn't matter who's in government, doesn't matter how much money or how much goodwill. We need this structural change mm. to get advice as to how we can better close the gap to get better outcomes for Indigenous people. Is there a fundamental, perhaps, um, weight of expectations being placed on the voice? Because we know all the issues. Indigenous groups know all the issues. And if what we're hearing is right, we know the solutions as well. And they're perhaps being ignored for some sort of reason. But 
are, are we sort of wary of this being some sort of magic bullet when so many different approaches have been tried in those areas you mentioned and a lot of them have either failed well, Tom, or, or plateaued? Tom, when, when you read the yes case, um, we are quite modest about, uh, about what this can do. We say it can play an important role. It is not the silver bullet. But one of the things that, in my experience, having worked in Indigenous Affairs space for a long time as the former chair of the House of Representatives Indigenous Affairs Committee, former chair of the uh, Constitutional Recognition Committee, as a former shadow minister for Indigenous Australians, one of the, the things that happens too often in, indig in Indigenous Affairs is we actually don't listen to the voices on the ground. And what this does is provides a formal mechanism that takes voices from local and regional areas, feeds them into a national body, to provide advice to the government and the parliament on how we can do a better job of closing the gap. We, we've right. lacked this formal structure. We've abolished structures in, in the past. What this says is uh, if we need to change the structure, we can change it and reform it, but we should always have some sort of structure there because that will help us make better policy for Indigenous Australians, and that's ultimately in the interests of all Australians. Julian, Lisa, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Tom.